This is lecture video 28, and in this lecture, we study numerical method called Newton's method. And this method approximates the solution of an equation like this, f of x equals zero, and it essentially uses tangent lines instead of the graph itself to approximate the zero of a function. And a value of x where f is zero is called the root of the function. For example, this point is a point where the image is zero, so we will call this point as a solution or a root of the equation. Okay, let's uh, look into more details. So look, consider this equation, please. The question is, can we find the roots of this equation? And the answer is, in general, we cannot, but we can approximate the roots of this equation by using Newton's method. And how this method works? First of all, you start by making a first guess. For example, x0 is the first guess for the actual root, okay? This is the actual root of your function. And x0 is the first guess. OK, so uh, first of all, you uh, determine your first guess. And this will be your first x approximation. And then you use the first approximation to get the second one, second approximation to get the third one, and so on. And every other approximation depends on the previous one via this example where the denominator is not zero, of course. So this equation is a recursive equation. Recursive relation on the approximation. Every next root depends on the previous one. So what I mean is, for example, let's insert n equals zero to the, this equation. Then what you have, x1 on the left side, you will obtain x0 minus f of x0, f prime of x0, right? So this x0 point will be our first guess. And as you can see, x1, which is the next approximation, depends on the x0, which is the first original approximation. And then uh, let's insert n equals one then the equation becomes x2, x1, f of x1 divided by f prime of x1. You see this time, you use this x1 in your equation that you find, that you found in the previous step, and x2 is determined totally by using x1. And so on. every next approximation depends on the previous one. So. For example, in the next step, you will be using x2 in your equation to find the third approximation and so on. Okay, so this is a useful, this is the um, main equation of the Newton's method that gives you the approximation recursively depending on each other. And the question is now, where does this equation come from? Let's try to understand. Okay, look at this uh, figure, please. This, as I said, this is the actual root of our graph because it is the x-intercept, it is the zero of our function. We want to find an approximation to this actual root. That's why we apply Newton's method. And we start by giving a first guess. Okay, and um, this is the algebraic way of how Newton's method work, but geometrically, we can understand this equation by analyzing the tangent lines. For example, you by using this first x0 point, you draw a tangent line to your curve. And then the, this x1 given by the Newton's method is in fact, the x-intercept of the tangent line drawn to your curve at the point x equals x0. So this is the geometric interpretation of this equation, okay? So x1 given by this equation in the Newton's method is in fact the x-intercept of the tangent line 
okay? This is the tangent line to your curve to y equals f of x at which point at x equals x0. So this tangent line intersects x axis at x1, being this x1 in your Newton's formula. And similarly, x2 here, this x2 is what? It is the x-intercept of the tangent line, this tangent line, this case, tangent line drawn to your curve at the point x1. And similarly, if you keep doing this, x3 coming from your Newton's formula will be what? It will be the x-intercept of the tangent line drawn to your curve at the previous point x2 and so on. It goes like this. And uh, at each step, as you can see, your ap approximations are getting closer and closer to the actual root. Let's write this down. So at each step, approximations are getting closer and closer to the actual root, which is given here, which is the red dot here. So this is the geometric interpretation of the Newton's method. And these approximations x0, x1, x2, x3 are given by this recursive equation, okay? So, and okay, I, I need to explain now where does this equation come from? In fact, it is totally related to the equation of the tangent line. Let's try to derive this equation together by analyzing the tangent line here. Okay, this is a tangent line to your graph drawn at which point? As you can see, we draw this tangent line at this point xn. And if you look at this point on your curve, it is xn and the image of xn, right? So now I will try to find the equation of this tangent line. Okay, we know how to construct an equation of that tangent line. It goes like y minus y zero, slope times x minus x zero. So y minus, this is being the y zero point, y zero component of this point, and this is being the x zero component in my formula, right? So f of x n slope times x minus x zero is in fact given as x n here. And uh, now we need to find the slope and slope is already given by the first derivative of your function, right? Slope is what? Given by the first derivative of your function evaluated at the uh, indicated point x n. So this is the slope. That's why I will write a prime x n here, okay? So let me write better. So f prime x n is the slope. And from this equation now, what we want to find, you know, this, all those equations are the uh, equations for the x-intercepts of the tangent lines. Now from this formula, I will try to find the x-intercept. Okay, so x-intercept of this line, which is the tangent line, can be found x-intercept of tangent line is in fact found by inserting y equals zero to your line equation. So if you insert y equals zero here, what you have, you have minus f of x n equals f prime of x n and um, x minus x n. And from this equation now, if you solve for x, you will directly find the x-intercept given by the Newton's formula, okay? So this is exactly what we have in the Newton's formula, you know? Xn minus f of Xn, f prime of Xn, and this gives you this intersection point, okay? So that's why we now can call it 
as the next approximation point, okay? So this formula comes from the x-intercept of your tangent line, which is here. And in this formula, we want to avoid the zero denominator because then the formula is useless. So the slope cannot be zero if you want to use Newton's method, okay? Slope cannot be zero so that it may have some x-intercepts at each step. Okay, that's how your formula is constructed. Now I think we can apply the Newton's technique to this example. Okay, starting with this um, initial gas, estimate the solution of this equation, it says. So here, this is our function, and we want to apply the Newton's technique Newton's method to approximate its actual roots. Newton's method we want to apply and to estimate the solution or we can call this solution as the root of our function. In the Newton's formula, we will need the first derivative of our function f prime of x, which is 2x plus one. And um, so our Newton's recursive equation goes like that. We understand that the right-hand side at each step gives us what? Gives us the x-intercept of such tangent lines. We just covered it here. And I will be using this recursive equation for n equals one, two, and so on. So if, if I insert n equals one, I have zero, f of x zero, f prime of x zero. And remember that we choose x0 as minus 1. x0 is the initial gas, and we choose it as minus 1. So it goes like minus 1 minus f of minus 1 divided by f prime of minus 1. And they are computed as f of minus 1 is obviously minus 1. f prime of minus 1 is again minus 1, so that we obtain minus 2. So the second approximation is minus 2. And let's do one more step to find the third approximation. And obviously, x2 will depend on the point that we already obtained in the previous step. x2 depends on x1, like this. OK, so let's insert the information that we find x1 as minus two. So it goes like minus two minus f of minus two, f prime of minus two. If you insert all the details here, it you will compute a number like minus two plus one third. So it is approximately minus 1.67. Okay, this is the approximation given by the Newton's technique given by Newton's method and the actual root is in fact, okay, let me tell you the actual root is in fact 1.622 if you use the calculators and you can see that how close they are. So Newton's method gives us a way to approximate the actual roots very strongly, very closely like this. Okay, so if you keep doing more uh, approximations and more steps, you will find more closer results to your actual root. Okay, let's try the next one. Use Newton's method to find correct to four decimals, it says. Okay, so this is the root of which equation? Let's first understand that because to be able to use the Newton's method with this recursive equation, I need to have the function it's up right we need an f so this number is the root of this equation obviously right it is a root of this f of x and we also need the first derivative of the function which is 6x to the power 5 and now in the previous example, we had the initial gas. It was given, but here the initial gas is not given. That's why we will try to make a nice initial gas here. 
So the actual root is this number, sorry, this number. And, you know, it is greater than square root five and obviously it is less than two. So you can choose your initial guess as this number. So it is our choice. We choose x0 as one. Okay, let's um, start ap applying this technique. If n is zero, we have x1, x0, f of x0, f prime of x0. Now I will insert my initial guess, which is one. So it is one minus f of one, f prime of one. So <clears throat> what are those numbers done? You, if you compute f1, f prime of one, and you will find seven over six here. And what happens if n equals one and x2 is x1, f of x1, f prime of x1. You know, we already find x1 as seven over six. So we will insert that to here because x2 totally depends on x1. 7 over 6, this will give you this number, 1.89. And this is really close to our actual root. So this number is 1.12 by calculator. So you see, even in the second step, we are really, we, we succeeded to obtain a very close number to our actual root. This is the actual root, and this is the approximation given by Newton's method. So it works like this, and as you can see, even in the second step, you get really close to the actual roots, which shows that Newton's technique is a strong, useful method. Okay, let's look at this one. Use Newton's method to uh, find an approximation to this equation, and it also gives the initial guess. Okay, what is the function here? ln x minus 9 plus x equals 0. So we want to find the root of this function. In fact, we want to approximate the root, right? And if this is the function, what is your first derivative done? It is 1 over x plus 1. Okay, let's uh, start the process of Newton's method. We are always using these recursive relations, giving us the approximations one another depending on each other. So if n is a zero, x1 is x0 minus f of zero, x0 divided by f prime of x0. So our initial guess is given as 10. So it is 10 minus f of 10 divided by f prime of 10. Your function is here, first derivative function is here. And then f of 10 is computed as ln 10 minus 9 plus 10, and this is what, this is one over 10 plus one. So if you compute this by calculator, you will find some number like seven, okay? And let's also do this one more time. X2 totally depends on X1, F prime of X1, and now we will insert X1 as seven, okay? So that uh, this becomes, and then, sorry, just seven, of course, the point itself, minus f of seven, f prime of seven, and you will find seven of five, like that. So this is the approximation for the second step, just like they want like this. And if you keep, I mean, if you like, you can keep doing more approximations to find more closer points. Okay, this question, I want to leave it as an exercise. Please um, study on this question and ask if you have any questions, please ask me later. And finally, in this lecture, I want to look at this example. So this is an example 
to uh, understand all the details of Newton's technique, we will be commenting on the details of it. For each initial approximation, determine graphically what happens if Newton's method is used for the function whose graph is shown. Okay, let's start with part A. We will decide if x1 equals zero, if zero, this point is used for the initial guess, Newton's method will work or not. We will decide this. So let's try to understand by using the geometric visualization of the Newton's technique. So if this is our first guess, without computing those relation, uh, recursive relations, I mean, these ones, we will be finding the next point by using the geometric argument of Newton's technique. So what was that? You draw a tangent line, sorry, you draw such a tangent line to your curve at your first initial point, and you look, look at the x-intercept of it. Now x-intercept is here, right? And then at the second step, so if this is your x0 point, or maybe you can call it as x1, as they call it as x1, I will also do it like this. So this is your second approximation, and then you need to do the same. You will draw a tangent line to your graph at the point x2, and you will search for the next x-intercept, which is here. And you see, by drawing those tangent lines, you don't get closer to the actual root, which is here. This is the actual root of this graph. It has two roots, in fact. This is also another actual root. So Newton's technique is not working for this first initial cho choice. Approximations, as we searched here, and this will be x4, you see x2, x3, x4, are getting not closer, but far away from the actual root. So let me write this down. Approximations don't get closer to actual roots. So why it is like that? It is just because our initial guest our first guess is not good enough. It is a bad one. Why I am saying this initial guess is bad is not a good one because you see choosing zero when the actual root is three is kind of far away from the actual root. You, you always need to choose your initial guess as close as possible to choose the initial guess as close as the as close as to the actual root okay to the actual root that's the reason that uh, Newton's method does is not working for this initial choice because it is not a good initial guess. It has to be chosen as close as possible to your actual root. Okay, let's look at part B. Part B says initial guess is one. Now it should work because one is close enough to this actual root. Close enough. That's why we expect that it will be working. Okay, um, by the way, there is another thing. Remember, okay, there is another detail here. At one, the tangent line is horizontal. And the first derivative of this initial point, x1 is zero because the tangent line horizontal there. So here we have the first derivative zero and if this happens you cannot apply Newton's method won't work as the horizontal lines cannot have x intercepts they don't intersect x axis geometrically the explanation is like that and algebraically 
why Newton's method won't work for this case, because look at the denominator. You see, this part is chosen to be zero, which cannot happen to have a nice uh, denominator, a nice, nice rational number there, okay? That's why part B is also not good because the denominator becomes zero there. And let's look at part C. This time we want to choose this S3. Okay, here, it seems like it will be working now. Let's draw the first tangent line to our curve. It will be something like this, you see. And here, the x-intercept, if you choose x1 as this, this will be your x2. Next tangent line will look like already, okay, you understand the process right now. I am drawing another tangent line at the second step. You see, this tangent line is already really close to the actual root, the x-intercept of it, really close to actual root. Already in, at, in the second step, we obtain an x-intercept, which is really close to the sec actual root. So this is a very nice first guess. So let's write Newton's method will work. Will definitely work. It work for this initial choice. Why we know that? Because if we draw this tangent line starting from this initial point, this is the first tangent line. You look at the x-intercept of it. Now you are here and you draw another tangent line to your graph at this point and you get already really close to your actual root and this shows geometrically that the Newton's technique is working. And similarly, for uh, let's also say some few words for the other cases, what will happen for x equals four? For x equals four, it is similar to this case. The first derivative will be zero, so Newton's method won't work, of course won't work because you will have this denominator zero in your formula and it shouldn't be zero. And for parts E where X1 is five, what happens? So this should also work because this is close enough to the other actual root. So I expect that it will be working. So draw your first tangent line, add five to your graph. So you are here. Now, second tangent line. The second tangent line, okay, will look like this one. And you see, you already get really close to this actual root here. So Newton's method for this case. will work perfectly as the initial guess is a good one. So this is how you understand Newton's technique geometrically by drawing tangent lines at each step to your curve. So I stop here. Thank you for your attention.